you guys, we are halfway there. Wednesday is almost over. And while we're only a week away, costumes and in chs and don't forget the q is also on social media at the q trivia just click that follow and stay up to date on all the action even maybe get a clue or two here or there and here's your reminder to keep emailing your best trivia to submissions at the q.live for your chance to be featured in friday's game keep them coming everybody we cannot do it without you so be sure to join us again in a few hours at 8 30 it's really exciting you know i love a good theme night we have another one this week last week was the office this week at 8 30 eastern it is friends all about that 90s don't worry i'm not gonna be wearing this i brought accessories to really spice up my 90s life again 8 30 for a special friends edition of the q the people have spoken they want friends we're giving away 250 bucks tonight right now at 5 30 you want to win the money? Here's how. There are 12 questions in the game. You have eight seconds to answer and three choices to pick from. The questions range from easy peasy to insanely tricky. Get the questions right. You advance to the next round. Make it to the end. You win cash. Who doesn't love that? But even if you do get eliminated, keep playing for points and don't forget to refer friends to sign up for the queue. You'll both get a life that you can use on questions one through 11. But remember, you can only use one life per game already. $250. Let's play 12 questions. Here we go. Question number one. Which is a word for one? Is it uno, dos, or tres? Okay, here we go. Which of these could I use instead of saying question one to you? Even if you aren't a wizard Spanish, I'm sure you can a good guess at which one is the right answer. Since pregunta means question, I could have said pregunta uno. Alrighty, that wasn't too bad. And even if you can only speak French like me, 3,193 of you Qsters agree more than uno of you are coming with me to Q2. Let's talk about one of my favorite pastimes and bad habits, shopping. Question number two, which retail chain has a bullseye logo? Is it Walmart, Safeway, or Target? All right, I could spend hours in this store. It seriously has everything you could ever need. Really, who doesn't love a good one-stop shop? Take some groceries home, maybe a TV, who knows? So which one has a bullseye logo? It is Target. Fun fact, its mascot is actually but after that bullseye logo. Target really has everything. If you haven't been, I don't know who hasn't been to a Target, but you need to go now. It looks like 3,104 of you hit the bullseye on that question. You can see it there. And are moving on, question number three, which is a Willy Wonka candy? Everlasting Gobstoppers Payday or Jolly Ranchers? I wonder if Charlie saw this candy being made in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. I'd love to see for myself and maybe catch a glimpse of some Oompa Loompas along the way. The Willy Wonka candy we are looking for here is Everlasting Gobstoppers. Although they'll break your jaw, anything made by Wonka is good. You just have to watch out for those cavities, maybe Grandpa Joe can give you a ride to the dentist. All right, 2,841 of you have found the golden ticket and are moving on up. Question number four, who helped write the song? Me and Bobby McGee, Janis Joplin, Roger Miller, or Chris Christopherson? This song is a classic and always puts me in a good mood. It's been released a few times by different artists starting in 1969. But who was the original writer? Well, it's actor, singer, and songwriter Chris Christopherson. Roger Miller was the first to release Me and Bobby McGee in 1969, but the version most people associate the catchy tune with is Janis Joplin. Hers was released in 1971 and topped the charts all over the world. But now let's shift gears and talk about what my life revolves around. Food. Question number five. Who trademarked the term brain freeze? Was it 7-Eleven, Icy, or Popsicle? Who can resist any of these treats on a hot summer day? I've definitely had my fair share of brain freezes from eating these too quickly, but pro tip, if you put the tongue, put your tongue and you push it up against the roof of your mouth, it can make it stop. So who come up, who came up with this crazy term brain freeze? Well, it's 7-Eleven. I am seriously in the mood for a surf. I'm really hot on this show right now. These lights can be hot, but I can never decide between blue raspberry or Coca-Cola. They're both so good. Either way, I'll do my best to avoid some not-so-chill brain freeze. It looks like 881 of you are keeping it chill and moving on to question six, the halfway mark. Q6, where was Olympic medalist Ryan Locked born? 
Is it New York, Florida, or California? I loved watching Ryan win 12 Olympic medals throughout the years. He's so entertaining that he was able to get his own reality TV show. Well, it might not have lasted long, but who can forget his signature grills and catchphrase, Jap? All of this came from a guy hailing from the great state of New York. Jap, for 528 of you Q-sters, you have got your locked knowledge locked down. Here's to hoping we get to see Ryan win some more medals in the Olympic Games in Tokyo in 2020, especially since Michael Phelps being retired. We need to have another new golden boy. Let's swim on over to question number seven and test your skills on time. Q7, which can refer to 50 years? Is it a gala, jubilee, or revelry? We all know 100 years is a century, but what is half of that milestone? I like the sound of each of these options, but only one can refer to 50 years. So which of them is it? The Queen of England celebrated her sapphire one last year. It is a jubilee. Did you know jubilee can also mean flambe? That sounds pretty good to me, too. What food doesn't? Until then, I am taking 514 of you over to question number eight to test you on some history. Here we go. Q8. Who is Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus Germanicus? Is it Caligula? Julius Caesar or Nero? All right, so that is one full name if I've ever heard one. I wonder how introducing himself to others was. He's known by a much shorter name, so what is a name we all know him by? Well, it is Caligula. Caligula actually translates into the name Little Boot, which I'm sure he didn't like too much since he was a fierce Roman emperor. No one can be too intimidating with a name like little boot but still 392 of you know all about caligula but do you know about your festivals let's take it on over to q9 and find out question number nine where does the oshega music and arts festival take place is it scotland canada or australia all right so i signed, saw the lineup for this year's festival and i'm really bummed i didn't go between post malone florence the machine travis scott i do not know who would have been my favorite I guess I'll have to wait until next year to go ahead and buy my ticket to Canada. Oshega actually means shaking hands by the native language. That's a perfect name for this festival because not only are people making friends and shaking hands, but you know they're shaking their groove things too. So 408 of you are shaking it on up, still in the game, and are going over to cue number 10. Let's check it on out. Question 10, which is a type of bird? Echidna, <laughs> spring hare, or titmus, also pronounced titmus. We are flying through these questions. I need my bird watching binoculars to see this answer. Which of these have you seen flying through the sky? If you're a bird, I'm a bird. And the bird here is a titmus. It can be found all over the East Coast, so if you East Coast Custers may have had an advantage on that one. We're so close to the end of the game. We are in double digits. We're past double digits now, and 357 of you still left. You're ready to spread your wings and fly on over to Q11. What is that? Question 11. Which of the following would not be accepted in a game of Scrabble? Is it true, girl, or pfft? That's how I'm choosing to pronounce that one. I challenge any of you Custers to a Scrabble match because you know I'm the queen of a triple word score. Seriously, my record is pretty great, and I am pretty good at knowing which words are playable. So which one of these is not accepted? Well, it's true. Looks like some of you need to brush up on your Scrabble skills. 187 of you, about half of you, cannot be outplayed. The other half, I'm so sorry you're not making it into the championship, but I might have some competition for my Scrabble game. Speaking of competition, we are at the end of this game. The next question, if you get it right, you're getting your fair share of that cash prize. Let's check it on out. Question number 12, which U.S. city has a replica of the Parthenon? Is it Nashville, Tennessee, Athens, Georgia, or Athena, Oregon? This replica was made to celebrate the city's centennial exposition back in 1897. It has a full-scale replica and even includes the goddess Athena inside. Maybe I don't need to make a trip all the way to Greece to see the Parthenon. Instead, I can just head to Nashville, Tennessee to see this one, and it looks like a whopping 240 of you are joining me. Congratulations on winning your share of $250. Way to go. Now, do not forget, we have another shot at all the money. Be sure to join us again in a few hours at 8.30 Eastern for the weekly theme game. Last week, 
We all know it was The Office. I was three hole punch Sid. This week, I'm going to be 90s Sid for a special edition of the Q Friends Edition. In the meantime, don't forget to follow the Q on social media. I hope you all enjoyed yourselves tonight. Now go brush up on your friends' knowledge. You have about three hours to binge watch it. I'll catch you back here in a few hours.